Hey guys, my name is Guillaume, this is Thurman's Guitars and Basses, and today I'm going to teach you how to master the fretboard in open tunings. Hey guys, I hope you're all having a great day today. Uh, this is sort of a second episode to a video that came out a couple of weeks ago that was the basics of open tuning uh, on guitar. In that video, I basically covered uh, the essentials of open tuning. So how to get there, how to understand the tuning of your guitar, how to tune it yourself, and how to figure out the basic chords, so like your major and minor chords. Today, I wanna dig a little bit deeper into that topic and try and teach you guys how to understand the fretboard without relying on any shapes or any sort of preconceived uh, habits that you might have from your experience with standard tuning or let's say drop tunings for example. And in my opinion the most important thing that you can do to master open tunings and understand them across the whole fretboard is to learn triads. Now a triad or at least a major triad is composed of three notes hence the triad and it's going to be uh, the root, the third and the fifth. So if you watched the previous video, you already know that this particular guitar right now is tuned in open E, which is uh, gonna be the same thing if you tune in open D and open C and whatever, but this is our example for the day and an open uh, tuning, at least in a major key, is gonna be one, five, one, three, five, one. So uh, here, that's gonna be E, B, E, G sharp, B, E. And that's all you need to figure out, at least the basics of triads, and then we'll expand on that, because you know that the root is always gonna be uh, e, you know that the third is always gonna be G sharp, and the fifth is gonna be a B. And what you want really is to figure out the different combinations of those three notes that you can find across the entire fretboard, so that wherever you land on the fretboard, you always know sort of what to fall onto if you kind of get lost into a solo, or if you need to figure out like a different voicing for a particular chord, you know exactly where these chords are because you know all the triads and all the inversions for them uh, across the neck. So let's start with the first triad that we're going to look at today, which is going to be uh, the first triad, so a 1-3-5 uh, progression, and in open E it's going to look like this. And what I referred to earlier as inversions mean that you're still going to be playing the one, three, five, or at least these three notes, but you're going to play them in a different order. So the first triad is going to be one, three, five, but as soon as you jump on the second triad, it's going to be three, five, one, and it's going to look like this. And you might think that it's kind of you know, once you can learn the shapes, all right, it's fine. You can learn the shapes and you kind of know where to fall onto uh, in case of emergency. But the point here is to really remember where the one, three, and fives are because that's going to help you uh, transform those triads and those inversions into everything else, basically. So last time when I taught you guys how to figure out the minor chords, for example, and that it was just taking uh, the third into a minor third, so I was half a step down. Well, that's really important to know for all your triads, and for that you need to know where the third is to be able to turn, for example, that first major triad into a minor triad. And it's really important to know that the third is going to be here in that context because first off, it's not always going to be here. It's not because you're in the first position of the triad. Like depending on where you play it on the neck, you'll soon realize that the, the third is going to move and you're going to have like a different finger to take down half a step. So that's why I think it's really important to know that this is going to be uh, one, three, five. This is going to be three, five, one. And this is going to be five, one, three. So I'll show those three again, just to be clear. Now the good thing is that on guitar the real estate is sort of limited already. So we basically had the 12th fret and we already covered the second version uh, of that triad. So obviously now what we're going to do is not, uh, you could keep going and keep playing the same shapes uh, up or on the neck, but we're going to have a look at the different positions uh, on the other strings that you can cover. <laughs> And 
and my favorite. <laughs> And again, I really want to stress the fact that these are not shape, or at least I really recommend that you try not to see them as shapes, but really as different configurations as that one uh, root, third, and fifth. And that will allow you to understand that even if here, taking the, the third to a minor third to have like a minor triad is gonna look like this, the second you go onto that particular major triad, which is the same thing, it's just like, uh, this is five, one, three, so here is one, three, five. So obviously the minor triad shit is gonna look like this. So again, don't learn shapes, learn the configuration of those three notes and that's gonna solve basically everything for you. Because once you have the numbers on them, and I, try, I tend to think of them as numbers more than notes because it's kind of easier to express that way, but you know that one is E, uh, three is G sharp, and uh, five is B. So you can basically map out those three notes across the fretboard, and from then on, basically, whatever note uh, you're at, you know exactly uh, which one it is. And that's gonna do a whole lot of lifting for your playing and just your improvisation skill once you have a certain chord progression or anything. Now, obviously, I'm playing with the tuning right now and this is all in E and this is, you know, the easiest key to sort of demonstrate that in, but it's gonna be valid for any key uh, that you're playing in. And so let's say if you're playing in F sharp, you know that your first triad is going to be here and that the notes are still gonna be one, three, five and the key of F sharp, that's gonna be uh, F sharp, A sharp, and C sharp, right? Yes, C right. sharp. <laughs> cool. But in that way, you're able to find uh, the, the root third, fifth in basically every key, every position on the fretboard. And in terms of improvisation, that's about as good as you can possibly get. Uh, again, there's a lot more to talk about and I really intend to make more videos on this topic because I'm really, really passionate with it. Uh, but I hope that video was useful. I hope that if you're exploring open tunings, this is gonna help you sort of lift up the, the veil of, okay, this is a major chord, what's next? Uh, and that you can figure out a little bit more stuff, maybe come up with your own progressions and your own sort of twists on those inversions and yeah, just have a whole lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on the rest of the videos that we post every week. Uh, take good care of yourselves. I'll see you down in the comments and in the next video. Bye.